what's up everybody it's your girl shantae back with another episode of chatting with shantae how in the world are y'all doing me i am doing fabulous so as y'all can see from the title and me still having my janet blanket up here as well as sporting my janet jackson hat you all can tell that we are talking about the second part of the janet jackson documentary baby the tea i told y'all last video that the second part was where all the tea was going to be coming out okay like the first part was us getting introduced to her and her family and how she emerged into stardom now we finna get into the meat and potatoes of it all honey so let's just get right into it get your snacks get your drinks prop your feet up like comment subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when i drop a video and let's get it let's go so we know the last part ended basically with the rhythm nation uh era kind of wrapping up and stuff like that so by this point mama is in her bag okay she has the success of control success of rhythm nation the album and the tour and she's at her prime low key like she's at the height of her career all these brand deals and endorsements and everything coming her way right so one of those is the whole coca-cola situation which i had no idea about so again around this time she has all the success and buzz around her coca-cola reaches out like look girl we love you we want to work with you you're amazing and y'all know mj he had his um, endorsement deal with pepsi so for her to have coca-cola that is huge right and we actually got to see footage of you know how that meeting went and how they were just expressing their love for her so right when she was about to sign the deal okay everything was looking good the numbers were right the money was cute right when she was about to sign the deal she got a call or got in contact with somebody and they pulled back they were like no thank you all because of the allegations swarming around her brother and that made me so mad just because i understand they come from the same family they got the same last name blah 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 but you have to respect the fact that not only are they two separate celebrities but they are two separate siblings they are two separate people the things that was going on with Michael and the allegations against him had 0% to do with Janet Jackson and what she had going on. So I, I kind of understand from a business standpoint why they would want to pull out, you know, just to, you know, play it safe on a safe side, you know. But at the same time, they should have known that whatever was going on with her brother should not have trickled down to her and it didn't but they were playing it safe and pulled back but did y'all peep how in her confessional when she was about to talk about it sis had to she had to adjust herself in her seat because now i'm not saying janet needed that endorsement because she's done very well for herself and got uh great deals throughout her entire career however a brand deal with coca-cola for a pop artist a big celebrity like any big brand deal that's like an athlete getting their picture on the cereal box. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that would have been amazing for her. And the fact that the only reason she got it taken away from her, it wasn't something she did. It wasn't something she said. It wasn't because she wasn't a good artist or celebrity. It was because of something that one of her siblings was going, you know, through. And that was like the first of so much unfair treatment to her in her career that we will get into later on down the line it just made me mad because coca-cola baby i would be mad but another thing that was really heavily focused on in this part of the documentary was her long-term romantic relationships yeah we talked about james but you know okay now we're getting into her marriages and you know her long-term relationships and you know all that good stuff so one of which being renee elizondo listen let me just preface this whole part by saying baby they was fine okay did y'all see they are fine all right so i could 100 percent see why they would be together first of all they were friends first okay great but as two creatives because he's a director in, in the uh, movie and film industry and her being a recording artist and having a vision for certain things they meshed really well and i want to i would like to think it's because they had such a high respect for one another not just as romantic partners but also from like visionaries like as a creative person like for one creative to be with another person another creative that's amazing you know so he had his eye for detail with certain things as she did as um she did and they meshed together i can't talk y'all they meshed together so well and created some amazing moments in her career so 
listen i am someone i love the camera okay you put the camera on me i'm posing yes 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 but renee would have got on my good and last nerve with that camcorder okay it wasn't like it was a little iphone or whatever he had the big camcorder in your face 24 7 like it was one part where they went to go surprise mommy Catherine, and you know they're hugging and kissing and then he got the camcorder talking about that was beautiful but if you can do it again and she's like that's too planned and you're doing too much Ooh, uh -uh. I just heard something y'all know that. But anyway, so baby, <laughs> basically, he got the big camcorder talking about do it again. She's like, you're doing too much. That's too rehearsed. That's too scripted. Don't record my mama. No, no, no. Don't record my mother. Okay, she was getting real gay. Listen, that Gary Indiana comes out when it comes out, okay? And then the people around them were getting annoyed. And now we kind of got to see, you know, a different side of Renee. I'm not sure if it's real different, but you know, we got to see another side of him. And now we're kind of segueing into the whole Poetic Justice and the Janet era. So before we get right into the Janet era, of course, we got Poetic Justice. The, the record labels are like, listen, you have this amazing tour that just wrapped up, this amazing album, another amazing album that came up before it. We need you in the studio. We need a third album. We need another tour. Like, let's get it. Let's go. And she's like, okay, well, you'll get that after I do this movie. So now we're getting to see her during Poetic Justice. So how she met Tupac and Regina King and Q-Tip. And we got to see like behind the scenes footage of like table reads and all that good stuff. That was so dope to me because we all know that is a black film classic. All right. And then Regina King was saying how, you know, uh, she sees so much of herself in Janet and seeing how, you know, she impacted and influenced her in, you know, uh, the acting industry and things like that. But Regina King also said, baby, if it wasn't for the fact that Renee Alexander was right on set and was Janet's boyfriend, oh, baby, we would have had Janet and Tupac. And I was like that would have been really really cute but yeah so that was really nice to see now we're getting into the janet era and y'all know the janet era is when we really got to start seeing that sexy side of janet you know that more sensual feminine not saying she wasn't feminine and controlling rhythm nation but a more like yes i'm grown i be kissing i be doing all this other stuff yeah okay anytime any place if i was your girl like we're getting to see that side of her and it was very interesting to me how much of an influence or how much of a heavy hand that renee actually played in that to see your woman okay pulling people up on stage and having lap dance sessions with them would be one thing oh but the bomb was he was the one picking out the guys like he was in the audience yeah y'all pick him yeah pick him he's a good dude yeah bring him up and let my woman hunch on him like what Renee and then when it came down to like recording different um music videos and stuff okay Jen, you need to be like this and be Lord I'm like and you comfortable with this all right okay but listen he was not far behind okay listen if she had like a kissing scene or a sensual scene in one of her movies or a movie I mean not movies uh music videos Renee was right there mm -hmm. <laughs> like Renee don't you want to go get you a beverage or something like step out the room for a second but we found out as time went on that he was starting to be a little bit more controlling and even down to the way she looks, like her body image and stuff like that. And if you know Janet, you're a fan of hers or whatever, you know her body image is something that she really struggled with ever since she was a little kid. And she uh, talked about that, you know, when she was on Good Time, she was 10 years old, how, you know, at that age, she was developing quickly. So people in the um, dressing rooms or whatever, they had to bind her chest together uh, or down so that way she could appear more flat chested. And to her, that was them saying, you're not good enough, you need to look better or whatever. And then she talked about the fact that Michael didn't did in fact tease her and you know called her a pig a horse slaughter hog and stuff like that and of course she knew it wasn't from malice or ill intention but from you know being a little girl you got these group of adults saying you know you're too top heavy at this young age you need to look better and then your brother saying this and now the man who you're married to or you know that we didn't know but the man you're married to um who was supposed to just love you and accept you and stuff like that 
he's talking about your image and i'm guessing it was from a standpoint of listen you want to show the sexy side of you you need to be looking like that at all times like he wanted her to be magazine ready at all times like going to the grocery store you need to have your heels on makeup done stomach on flat flat ass on fat fat you know like stuff like that and i'm just like renee first of all we don't even know what you look like behind this big old camera pipe down okay but one of the most iconic things that came from the janet era was of course that rolling stones magazine photo shoot the most iconic magazine shoot ever i don't think any cover from any magazine from any artist or a celebrity has topped that that is just iconic okay and now uh, them revealing that it was Renee's hands wasn't shocking to me because we found that out years ago. At least a good majority of us did. Um, but it was just, it, it was so funny to see everyone else's reaction. Like, that was him? Oh my gosh, you know. And I've always wondered, especially after I uh, found out that it was him holding her boobies, I always thought to myself, I wonder if they have like, um, you know, flirtatious shots, you know, like just giggly shots or whatever. Um, because the only one that we really seen was like the primary one where she's like this and he's holding and that's it. Um, but we did see so many different outtakes from that uh, shoot and I thought that was amazing. I love that. Listen, Big Sis Reby was like, baby, I wasn't here for none of it. None of it, okay? It wasn't cute. I didn't like it. I don't know who she thinks she is. We wasn't raised like that. I don't know what God they talked to, but the one I talked to, I was like, Reby, it's a boobie. Okay, it's a boob. Do you understand me? It's a, her husband is holding her titties. It's quite all right. But anyway, then we found out towards the uh, latter part of their relationship, which is going into the velvet rope. Side note, I asked you all what y'all thought my favorite Janet album and era of all time was in the last video. And it is indeed a million percent the velvet rope. That is such a masterpiece. If you've never heard the album, I need you to go to iTunes, Apple Music, Tidal, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, wherever. Search the Velvet Rope album and just let it play, okay? Especially after watching the documentary and knowing exactly what she was going through at that time and who she was going uh, through it with and, you know, previous relationships. It'll just make so much sense to you now. Listen to it. It's such a masterpiece. I would stay up watching the sun come up, okay? Not going to sleep yet. Watching... Uh, the different footage clips on YouTube from the um tour. Then I bought the DVD of the Madison Square Garden, like the HBO special. I bought that DVD, watched it till it cracked, okay? Listening to the album over and over, watching all the interviews around that era. I love that era so much. And I know a lot of people say her most beautiful era is the Janet era, which, listen, all her eras are flawless, okay? And I understand why people say that because she was more like a doll. It was very, like, you know, sensual and stuff like that. But I just feel like the Velvet Rope is when she just really had her effort, okay? Effort. If I'm going to keep doing this, I'm going to do it my way for sure. I'm done trying to please people. I'm tired of putting my ideas to the back burner. If you don't like it, you can kick rocks. I don't really care. I'm going to dye this hair. Mama was thick, okay? Mama was thick. <laughs> I'm finna dye this hair. I'm finna get tatted up. I'm finna have these piercings. And what's good? I'm finna dress the way I wanna dress. All right. I'm finna talk about things I wanna talk about. And again, if you listen to that album, a lot of things she was talking about, you know, like depression, same sex relationships, HIV, AIDS, and just so many different things that record labels probably would have been like, you sure you wanna do that? She was like, I don't see why not. And then this was when rumors about her being gay, like, are you gay? Do you like women? Have you had sex with women? We're coming out. And she was in the interviews like, and if I am, who gonna stop me? I was just like, oh, my bad, sis. So I love the velvet rope just because the courage, like, I just, it's just so raw. It's just so raw, okay? But we're getting out of the velvet rope era and we find out that um, uh, Renee actually had a problem with pills, okay? He was addicted to like painkillers or something like that. And that's why she said at the beginning of the documentary, you know, I guess I'm just have this thing for people who, um, you know, abuse drugs, you know? And we were like, well, girl, who are you talking about? And Renee was another person. I was like, dang, okay, dang. And then their divorce um, came out. And the funny thing about their divorce, I mean, not funny, but ironic is no one knew they were married until their divorce got announced. Like the news came out, Janet Jackson's uh, ex-husband or husband files for a divorce after 10 years of marriage. And it's like a two for one. Oh my God, they're getting a divorce? Wait, they were married? Wait, wait, what? Like, that's just crazy. Listen, take notes from Janet Demita Joe Jackson. 
okay when you pop out that's what it means to pop out either y'all gonna find out i'm married 10 years into my marriage or when we're getting a divorce like y'all ain't finna know my business okay listen reby had me dying talking about some and the next thing i know janet popped up me <laughs> like even reby didn't know okay and i love that but now after that we're going into like the nutty professor in 2000 going into the all for you era so mama is divorced she's 35 rock hard abs looking good and everyone around her is like she's in a good place a happy place she's feeling good her career is great she's looking great blah 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 and then there's an interview and someone asks her so what is that you would like to you know to happen next in your life and she basically was like you know i would like to be in love and that's how we get into the whole jermaine dupree relationship a relationship that had everybody going hmm? now how did they get together and i know for a lot of people they do that based off you know his looks and her looks and stuff like that but to me i just feel like it was one of those things where they come from two separate sides of the track, you know? Like, we have Janet, who's like this pop royalty diva princess, okay? In Los Angeles and all glitz and glam and ha. And then we have Jermaine Dupri, you know, hip-hop artist, rapper from ATL, like club life. Like, you know, it's like real, what's good? And it's like, how did y'all meet? Like, that's like a connection I didn't see coming, especially, you know, when she was with, um, you know james the barge and they share a very common background in the you know being from a musical family and then even with renee though he wasn't from a musical family you know being from the film industry and stuff like that jermaine dupree girl what club you was at when you met him but basically we got him on there talking about how they first met i think it was like at the rhythm nation tour backstage so that's like 1990 so years before they even got together and he was like listen when i met her i wasn't famous but i told her this ain't the last time you're going to hear my name or see my face. We're going to see each other again. And then, boom, we get into their relationship. And though, from the outside looking in, it looked like an odd pairing, you can tell just from looking at old videos of them and pictures or whatever, how in love they were. Like, they were literally best friends. Like, literally. Like, and we saw this real goofy side. It felt like she was actually letting her guard down. She was really relaxed in that relationship she didn't have anyone she was like you know he wasn't addicted to no drugs or nothing thank god and it was the first time where she could really be herself and listen if you can think back to that time period in like the you know early to mid 2000s that's when her weight was like really up and down and she was with uh jermaine and he loved her at her heaviest at her thinnest whatever and she had never really had that it was like a sense of security a sense of fun and just real just laid back vibes and you could tell she was so happy. We did find out that he did in fact propose to her. And so there's pictures of her sporting this big old yellow diamond ring and videos and interviews and stuff. And people ask her, so is that an engagement ring or what's that? And she's like, it's just a ring. I mean, sporting this big old rock, it's just a ring. And I'm just like, well, I know you didn't get it from the jewel. Like what, what? Girl, pull on to me. But yes, they did reveal the fact that they were engaged and all that stuff. So now we get into why they broke up because they were together for almost 10 years. So why y'all broke up? Like, you know, an odd pairing to some, but y'all could tell y'all was really rocking with each other. So why are y'all not together no more? And I feel like for years we heard different things as to why, but nothing really concrete and solid until now. So they asked Jermaine and he's just laughing his butt off. I'm just like, did they tell you a joke in your ear? Like, what's funny? And he was basically saying, you know, I guess it was because me being a man, I was being reckless. And I'm just like, Okay, and I feel like one of the things that kind of stuck throughout the years as to why they probably broke up was the fact that, you know, he was in Atlanta, you know, that's where he's from. That's where he does all his uh, business and stuff like that. And uh, Janet was in LA. That's where she does her business. That's where she does her stuff. And neither one of them was trying to really permanently relocate. For the other like he wasn't trying to leave Atlanta and just live in LA and vice versa she really wasn't trying to leave her life in LA to be in Atlanta yeah they would visit with one another for weeks or a month or so at a time in their respective you know territories but you know gotta go so that was a thing uh, that I guess can say you can say played a part in it but then they asked Janet and she's like girl let me tell you I had heard he was cheating I said you heard it okay but that was her way of saying he cheated and then he went on to say that thing about him being reckless and being a man and then he says 
which the math was not mathing at all for me. He goes on to say, you know, when you're dating Janet Jackson, you're going to have a whole bunch of women, you know, flocking to you and being attracted to you because you're dating Janet Jackson. And, you know, me being a man, me being reckless, I fell for that. And I'm just like, so you're admitting you, you can vividly see that the only reason these chicken heads are coming for you or coming towards you is the is because you're dating janet jackson no not because of your name not because of your money not because of your status only because you're dating janet jackson this is the only reason why these women are coming to you and you fell for that you dodo head i'm so mad at jermaine dupree for that like you got janet jackson like you, where else we gotta go where else do we gotta go you got janet jackson Janet Jackson. You're cheating on Janet Jackson with women who want to be Janet Jackson. Man, I'm so mad. And then, you know, after she said he, she heard he had been cheating or whatever, and she was like, it wasn't just that. You know, she felt like at that time in their lives and their, you know, relationship, he really couldn't give her everything that she wanted at that time. Now, mind you, this was in all the interviews saying, you know, I love this man. I want to push out all his babies. I don't regret saying that. We can have as many as he wants. And I'm just like, girl, we got to put a limit to it, actually. Like, give him two, okay? Give him two or three, and that's it. But she was like, I want to push out all the babies in the world for him. I love him. Mwah, mwah, mwah. But you got to remember, you know, him being like a music producer, okay? A hip-hop rap music producer in Atlanta hit... And she was like, you know, he was always at the club. Not just to be at the club, just to be dancing. But his line of work, you know, the part of the music industry he's in, being at the club is his job. Like, he has to be there. And then studio time, music videos, regular business deals in the office, and stuff like that. She was like, you know, by the time it got to me, he only carved out a little bit of time for me. And that was just us chilling at home, maybe. And, you know, she was like, his he was a workaholic. So he wasn't really addicted to drugs or, you know, substances or alcohol. He was, you know, pouring all his time and energy and attention into his work. And she felt like, you know, his girlfriend is the club, is his work. And so that's how we got to why they're no longer together. And he did admit, you know, the fact that he's a non-confrontational person. So I guess she presented the idea of them breaking up or she was going off about him cheating. And instead of fighting for their relationship, he just kind of, you know, stepped back and was like, okay. So he didn't really fight for the relationship. And he did say, had he fought harder and did better, they would have never broken up. And I can agree to that. I, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, Janet doesn't strike me as the type to go back to an ex, but I just feel like, you know, the way they still be talking about each other, child, listen, if you had to go back, Janet, just go back to Jermaine. Let's just do this. I feel like he's matured, you know, over these 10 plus years. Let's just do that. Okay. Let's just, you know, have some security a little bit, but yeah, so that's how we got into their relationship and why it ended. But of course, in the midst of that relationship, the Super Bowl happened. So this was 2004, and we got to talk about that because that was one hot topic, one big thing in this documentary that, you know, had to be addressed. So, oh, I, I'm mad, okay? I'm just mad. But I'm going to talk about, you know... The footage we saw, you know, leading up to the Super Bowl. So 2004, she's doing press. She's doing interviews. Yes, I'm so excited. This is a dream come true. This is amazing. We've got a surprise guest for y'all. It's going to be amazing, okay? And, of course, that surprise guest was Justin Timberlake, you know. And, listen, I'm going to just put it out there. Janet didn't need not nobody else to be on that stage with her except for her and her dancers. That's all she needed. We didn't need no surprise guests. We didn't need no cameo appearance. We didn't need nothing. No shit. Actually, all shade. He wasn't needed, but whatever. I see why. I see why people do these things, but honey, we didn't need him. But yeah, so leading up to the Super Bowl, everybody's pumped. Everybody's excited. Yes, yes, yes. Now we get to the day of the... Yes, I'm retwisting my hair. I'm sorry. Um, but um, yes, we get to the day of the Super Bowl. Everyone's hyped up. Yes, she's backstage kissing Jermaine. Yes, I'm excited. Boom, she goes out there and she kills it for her solo part. Everything's amazing. The fireworks, everything's perfect. Then Justin Timberlake comes out. Bam! Oh, snap! We didn't see that coming. Yes, yes. They are jamming, okay? They're vibing off each other. The entire 
time is perfect. And I just hate that this spectacular halftime performance got boiled down to nine sixteenths of a second. Yes, that is, that is the exact time frame measurement, nine sixteenths of a second. So everyone's recounting the moments um, before, okay, everyone who was there. So we have Gil who, you know, started dancing with her during the Velvet Robe. He's her creative director and also a good friend. We also have uh, Wayne Scott Lucas who is, you know, wardrobe. We have Rebe who wasn't there personally, but her children were there. We got Jermaine. We got a few people who were there, you know. And so they are saying, like Jermaine was like, you know, by the time I got to my seat, they were already performing. And I'm just like, where were you coming from? The parking lot? Like, what are you talking about? But, you know, but that just goes to show how quickly all this happened. And everyone was like, you know, they end the song by the time, you know, uh, I'm heavy naked by the end of the song, bam. And some people missed it because that's how quickly it happened. And those who did see it, it was like, what just happened? What just happened? You know? And so Rebe says, you know, her children were there and they were telling her what happened. And immediately when it happened, Janet covered up and started crying. She was off the like going off the stage crying. And other people were like, did y'all see what happened? What just happened? Jermaine ran backstage, like what's going on? And he didn't even see it, okay? But he heard all this chitter chatter about people talking about it. He's like, what just happened? What's going on? Why are you crying? You know? And it was in that moment we really saw how, how much of a negative impact not impact well yeah negative impact this had on her career and people really think that she did that on purpose and i really need us all to stop and think for one second this is janet jackson in 2004 not 1990 not 1984 trying to get her career picked up mama has broken records that people have not touched 30 plus years later. Number one movies, number one, what the heck? Number one albums, okay? Big brand deals, the highest paid recording artist ever, twice. Male, female, uh, black, white, any genre, the highest paid. People were throwing themselves at her to work with them. You really think in 2004 that she needed to pull a gimmick as low as pulling out her breast to get ratings? To get people buzzing about her? Are you kidding me? And then some people even say, well, she had that big nipple piercing, so she must have wanted it to be seen. Yeah, by her man. Yeah, Jermaine. Listen, her and Jermaine was the only people who was supposed to see that. Now, I will say that was a pretty big nipple brain, Miss Mama's. Like, ouch. But, okay, that's like you pulling off a woman's shirt walking down the street and then you see she has a little nipple ring and then want to justify your actions by saying oh well she has her uh boob here so she must have wanted it to happen really are you kidding me and the damage that was done to her career after that oh and another thing immediately after it happened she went off the stage crying do you think someone who did that on purpose and there's footage of her crying there's pic like it you can see it actually happened immediately covered up and crying do you honestly think someone who wanted that to happen would be crying at the fact that it happened if they did it on purpose? Leave me alone. Get out my face. And now we go to the present day and Randy, the whole, the reason why this whole Super Bowl thing came about is because Randy uh, told her, you know, Justin is going to be performing at the 2018 Super Bowl and he and his team have been trying to contact us about you possibly joining him as like a surprise guest act for his halftime show. And Randy barely got the question out before Mama was like, no, thank you. It's a no for me. Hell no. No, mm -mm, no, I'm not here for it. And because, you know, it's been over 10 years, you know, our prior history with CBS. And I don't really, I don't need to do that. I'm Jenna Jackson. I don't need to do that. And when she talks about uh, the history they have with CBS, let's move this. Let's get into him. His funky self. Because of his position at CBS, you know, he was like the head honcho at CBS. He was so disgusted at the fact that her booby came out for a split millisecond. And so he didn't want any of the um, networks to play her music videos. And mind you, she was recording a brand new album. Super Bowl happened in February 2004. The Demita Joe album came out a month later in March. So this is happening right when she's 
supposed to be promoting a new album, right? So he didn't want her music videos being played on uh, like VHS, um, uh, MTV, any of the networks didn't want the airwaves playing her music okay she got disinvited from the grammys she had movie a movie deal uh snagged from her um endorsement deals brand deals she has a statue at disney world well not a statue of her but it was a statue of mickey mouse dressed in the rhythm nation attire they took that down so many things got taken away from her and randy asked her after that Super Bowl incident happened, did Justin reach out to you? And she said, yes. Now, from the outside looking in, when this happens and she's getting dragged and canceled or whatever, and we see Justin just, you know, floating in the, you know, to the heavens, okay? It's looking real suspect, like, okay, like, are you not defending her? Like, do you not reach out? But we find out he did reach out to her and basically was like, you know, what should I say in my statement? Should I make a statement? Like, what should I do? What should I say? And she was like, they are targeting all this hatred towards me. I don't want you and your career to suffer for this. So she was trying to help him, okay? I don't want you to say, don't, don't say anything. That's what she told Justin, don't say anything. And instead of him going against his better judgment and, you know, going against what she said and still defending her, he said, okay, I won't. And she's sitting at home Grammy night. He's up there performing or accepting awards or whatever she can go to this award show this after party this whatever he's there chilling dabbing people up okay like her career got severely scratched i'm not gonna say damaged um but it got it took a few hits it, it had some dents in it after this and it made me look at justin i don't know if that was supposed to make me be like oh well at least he reached out no ma'am it didn't because just because she told you not to say nothing doesn't mean you should have said anything like, you claim to love and respect this woman. You look up to her. You pay many tributes to her and all this other type of stuff. Your band was an opening act for her during, what, the Janet tour or whenever? Are you kidding me? You claim you love her and you had equal parts in this. And so just the fact that she told you not to say nothing, you're going to take that as an okay not to say anything, that made me look at him like, you cowardly piece of fooey. And then... I don't know who Janet thought she was talking to. She did a, a video. It flashed to Miami 2022. I was like, when did y'all do this? This morning? Like, when was this? And she made a little clip talking about some, listen, you guys, it's Janet. This whole situation with Justin Timberlake in the Super Bowl has been blown way out of proportion. I've moved on. Justin has moved on. We're great friends. We were just kicking on the phone the other day. So please move on. It's for the better. And I'm just like, That has absolutely nothing to do with me. Listen, the only person in this situation who needs to forgive and move on is you. And I'm glad you did that for your healing and for your own peace. As for me and my folks, because we were all in unison and agreeance on Twitter, you can forgive him, but we don't, okay? So every time I see Justin, I'm throwing tomatoes. Boo. I'm throwing a tomato at him. I am. And tomatoes aren't even hard enough. I'm throwing an avocado. I'm throwing an avocado. I am. I'm throwing an avocado. And I dare Janet Jackson to try and stop me. Because I'm not stopping. Like, girl, you can forgive him, but I'm not. I don't know what she thought that was supposed to do for me, but it made me giggle just a little. But whatever. So that's the whole Super Bowl situation next so now between the super bowl and 2009 she's done other movies which that's how we see um her relationship and friendship with tyler perry start because even two years later when he was doing why did i get married he was like you know people still weren't trying to work with her after what happened and stuff like that but he saw the good in her and whatever and listen y'all had tyler cussing chill people is just a effing nipple i said relax mabel simmons relax he was mad he just loves him so janet but it's good that he was on her side and was willing to you know still work with her and give her such a big role in this big movie and stuff like that so that happens and she has like another album and then boom 2009 they're in the middle of filming why'd i get married too everything's going great and then the news of michael jackson passing away hits and i feel like everyone to an extent 
can remember that day so vividly. You remember where you were, who you were talking to, what you were doing. Some people probably even remember what they were wearing when they found out that um, Michael Jackson had passed away. That was such a big moment because like Michael Jackson, for as long as I've been alive, has always been this big household name, this big celebrity. He's supposed to live forever, you know? It just didn't sound right. And so she told us how she found out. You know, LaToya called her. She called Jermaine and all that other stuff. And that is just so sad. Now, kind of going back to MJ, we kind of got to go back a little bit. So after the whole allegations, you know, back in the 90s happened and it got settled. Um, he was like, I got some things to get off my chest, okay? And we finna record this song. So we actually got to see footage of them in his New York apartment. And they're developing Scream, you know, getting the lyrics together, the concept, and stuff like that. The funniest thing about this was Mike was just spitting out the lyrics to Jan. She was on that laptop pecking like, Mike, can you wait a second? Hold up. Okay, all this injustice. What happened? Can you slow down? Like, and she keeps telling him to slow down. And he's just like, I'm like, baby, write it down, okay? I hope you memorize what he just said because uh-uh. And so we got to see that part. And now we see like recording studio, uh, recording studio sessions of them like actually recording the song. And he was telling her, look, Dunk, the same attitude and energy you had in Black Cat, that's what I need you to have in Scream, okay? That's how I need you to sing this song. And I was just like, you know, Mike, the last time somebody tried to tell Janet how to sing a song in the studio, she ended up cussing them out and leaving. So do we really need a repeat of this? But I digress. So we see that. And now we get into actually filming the video. And her producer was like, you know, recording something with your brother, recording Scream, that entire process had to be such a high point in your life. It had to be some of the most fun you ever had. And she was like, not even a little bit, no absolutely not it was a hot mess so much drama surrounded that entire time okay it was only supposed to be a three-day shoot it went far longer than that it was only supposed to be x amount of dollars it ended up being seven million dollars okay over budget um overly worked days like it was a hot mess and they didn't even film the video together i mean they had scenes together where they did it together but she would shoot her parts in the morning he would shoot his at night and whenever they were on set together, his team would block off his set just so she couldn't see what was going on. And that's how we get into the whole like separation that was really going on between the two of them. And it wasn't just, you know, their busy schedules. Like he's a mega superstar getting pulled this way and she's a mega superstar getting pulled this way. It was the people on his team trying to create drama and, you know, the separation that shouldn't have been there. And she was like, you know, he has people on his team that are trying to separate him from his family. And that's not right. I hate that, okay? To block off the set while, you know, he's doing his parts just so she can't see what's going on. Are you kidding me? And there's also been other stories and stuff about how, you know, just rivalry type of things going on during that time like recording that whole thing and now i understand why we never got a janet and michael collaboration after that i understand why and i've always thought to myself what would a janet and michael jackson tour uh be like like that would be iconic can you could you actually imagine that like you got to get through his discography her discography joint collaborate like that would be epic that show would still be going on to this day that's how long it would be but I understand why we never got that. But she did reflect on her final moments with MJ. She was talking about the last time she saw him. And it was such a beautiful time, okay? They were having a surprise party for their parents at who, whose house? I don't know. One of their mansions. And he was there. The entire family was there, which you can tell was a very rare occasion. Because even Reby at one point was like, girl, I ain't seen Michael in a year and a half. I don't know what he doing. I don't know, okay? And so you can tell that, you know, them having regular Sunday dinner every week wasn't happening. So that all the family was there and he was just laughing and joking and being his usual self. And, you know, they looked at each other, had a great moment. And the very last thing they said to one another was, I love you. And then he passed away. I mean, not, you know, but, you know, he eventually ended up passing away. And I know years later, she is still so torn up. Like, even now when she talks about it, you can see her getting choked up. And it's just so sad because they were like this. 
and but i just pray that she has like a sense of peace and knowing that her the last memory she has of her brother is them just laughing being surrounded by their entire family and their lasting words and their parting words were i love you so i pray she has a sense of peace about that but that just whoo we then of course during this time you know her and jermaine dupri break up so now we go from that to kind of present day really like 2015 2016 ish so she didn't got remarried okay you notice they said nothing about the current ex-husband which legal reasons gag orders if you know the drama that's surrounding them you understand okay but yeah but now we're uh, getting into like you know when she's making her comeback so unbreakable and that was a short-lived era in my opinion but you know she comes out with a new album and tour and then that had to get you know cut because my husband and I are starting our family so now it's a big thing Janet Jackson giving birth at 50 and you can tell how much she loves being a mommy like she just lights up like she just gets this jolts of energy like I'm a mama and I'm proud of it. and if you think I'm sucky now if you think I'm not performing as good I don't care because I'm a mama and who gonna stop me I was like you better say that with your whole chest you better say with your whole chest Demeter but she loves that baby she loves him side note we ain't ever gonna see Issa until he's holding a little Issa of his own we haven't seen that boy since he was one okay he just turned five okay earlier this month i'm a uh, capricorn legend i love him but yeah so then we get into you know post divorce she's getting a divorce she's kicking off the state of the world tour which listen i was at the opening night 2017 of the state of the world tour here in lafayette louisiana baby that was amazing i passed out she waved at me and i fainted okay i was doing the hardcore Boom, 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 boom. I'm hitting the lady next to me. Side note, don't go to a Janet concert if you ain't trying to dance, whatever. So I'm doing a choreography. I'm meeting people. I'm having a great old time. That will forever, September 7th, 2017, will forever be one of the most iconic days of my life. But I digress. So we're seeing like how she's, you know, post-divorce, post-baby, getting back into the swing of things and stuff like that. So while that's going on in 2018, now the news hits that her father, Joe Jackson, has passed away. Very sad. Very, very sad. You can tell it took a lot from her. And this was right, and I remember when this happened, because she was kicking off the second leg of the State of the World Tour, so State of the World 2. And again, opening night was here in uh, Louisiana in New Orleans for Essence Fest. And she stopped the show, or not stopped the show, but she, you know, had a moment where she was taking time for her father. And she was like, you know, when he passed away, I didn't think I could continue with the tour. Like, I was going to cancel the tour. But she knew that her father wouldn't want her to do that and she pushed on and here we are so um that's just really really sad like we all have our various opinions and stuff and the things we've heard about joe jackson but that's still her father and she talked about you know the moment she had with him she was glad that he was able to meet his grandson and spend time with him and they had like i guess closure i guess you could say because she never really had that traditional daddy daughter relationship with him it was very busy uh business wise it was very you know strict or whatever and i just feel like in his final moments they got to have those conversations that really needed to be held held they got to say what they needed to say they got to you know express their gratitude and appreciation and love for one another before he passed away so i'm glad that two very important men in her life her big brother and her father though they passed on her lasting moments and memories that she has with them are on good terms so i hope again she has peace with that and uh, yeah and now the news or what she said that just broke my heart mama said you know i've had a great career okay a long career and now we're getting this montage of her moments in her career we got missy yelia we got sierra we got tiana taylor we got whoopi we got everybody Talking about who is Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson is a legend. Janet Jackson is an icon. We got all this going on while she's saying, you know, I've had a beautiful career. But the only thing I want to do now is just focus on being a mom. So I'm going to go out with a bang, a big bang. And yeah. And I was just like, I know she didn't just spit out a retirement announcement. Now, did she say the words, 
I'm finna retire. No, but when you get the montage of her career, you got the celebrity saying who she is. She's saying she just wants to be a mother. You put two and two together, you get folded to because the math was mathing and I'm very sad about it, okay? Now, the selfish part of me is like, no, don't you dare retire. You're supposed to perform and put out music forever. Don't you do this. But then the reality sinks in. She will be 56 this year, which nothing against her age because, listen, she's proven that age ain't got nothing to do with nothing, okay? But she's been doing this since she was seven. Sis really could have been retired if you want to keep it funky. But <sighs> I'm just sad. But anyway, so she's had a long career since she was seven. And any kind of normalcy that she has will be geared towards raising her son and these important moments because again he just turned five so oh so i'm assuming that black diamond will be you know if not her retirement era about to be her i don't know um now that footage of her saying that she just wants to be a mommy that was from 2017 and of course black diamond was originally was supposed to be for 2020 and then COVID hit um and i'm just sad because listen i listen i'm so heartbroken because let me just tell y'all, I was born in 1996, okay? So by the time I was born, Control was 10 years old. The Janet era had just wrapped up. The Velvet Rope era was about to start the next year, but I was only one years old. So a lot, like her prime eras and moments and stuff, I was either not born yet, had just been born, or I was still a little, 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 little girl who couldn't grasp the concept of what was going on. And then fast forward to 2015, we get the Unbreakable Era. I'm a sophomore in college at that time. And it was an era, but again, short-lived, okay? There was really no press around it. She did no interviews, no magazines, no nothing, okay? And I mean, we got an album, we got a short tour, and then boom, she has her child or whatever. Then we get fast forward a couple years later to the State of the World Tour. Went to that, that was amazing, but no album. You know, like, you know, the. I don't know. I just never, I feel like I never got to experience a full Janet era, like from the announcement to the press, to the interviews, to the magazines, to the tour, to the out, like add the whole package deal. Okay. I feel like I've gotten bits and pieces here and there, but I want to experience a full like singles and stuff like that. Unbreakable gave us that, but I want like the press and promo with it as well. Like I want the full thing. And when she announced that, um, black diamond in january 2020 was coming out who i was so excited i still excited but i was like i'm about to experience a full janet jackson era she was doing interviews late night talk shows radio interviews she was on the view since had her fur coat on i was like oh this is gonna be a bougie era she was talking about why she called like the concept behind uh black diamond is the toughest of the diamonds and i realized after my marriage to mr uh abu dhabi over here and he was mistreating me oh yes i got some things to say and mind you the last album we got she was still married she hadn't become a mother just yet you know so many different changes had come so she was like I got some things to say in this next album and I was getting nervous I'm like what are you about to reveal to us what are you preparing us for I was nervous but in a good way and she was doing all this press and promo and stuff and then COVID said I hate to rain on your parade baby girl but here we go and now we're here two years later but I'm just excited to see what's going on okay I'm, I'm nervous and I'm sad because the reality sinks in that Janet Jackson could be retiring and I don't want her to. I don't, but I understand you gotta be a mother. But no, like don't, don't retire just yet, okay? Give us another 20 years. Is that, I know that's so, that's 76 years. <laughs> but no, for real, I, she's had such an amazing career and kind of going back to the Super Bowl incident real quick, Again, she's been doing it since she was seven. She'll be 56. So almost a 50 year career. And the only thing that they can hold against this woman, barely, is her boob. I will say that's a very pristine uh, career, okay? Now, yeah, there's been like rumors and stuff, but I'm talking about like scandals, okay? The only scandal they can hold against Janet Jackson that has something to do with Janet Jackson is the fact that her breast 
a piece of her nipple got exposed for nine sixteenths of a second. And one more thing, kind of going back to that, like I said, she had an album coming out the month, like the prior month, and it still went to number two despite all the blacklisting, despite all the airwaves not playing her music, despite all the channels not showing her uh, videos and not being invited to this award show and that award show. To still go number two, y'all couldn't have been that mad. Okay, like now, yes, it did break her five consecutive number one album streak, but that's okay, that's okay. But I mean, to still chart number two after all this, after all y'all didn't went to the press, y'all didn't, y'all are holding court hearings and went to the government, fines are coming out. Well, she still did really, really well. I mean, you know, yeah, I was just, you know, okay, but then she did debut, well preview <laughs> a new song at the end of the documentary called love i love and i like it it's a little groove i mean for what we heard and i was expecting like the full song to be dropped i mean though because the whole day when the news broke out oh jan jackson to premiere a new song during her documentary and then some people saying oh yeah a music video i'm just like where's that so i'm like oh jay this how you coming oh we in the era for real you finna just drop songs in the middle of a documentary baby it was the very end like the rolling credits okay but i liked it from what we heard and i was expecting a instagram post from miss jackson talking about hey y'all my new song is out we didn't get it but that's okay because something's telling me it's coming okay you can't just give me a snippet of a cute song and not give it to me you know soon after that's how i'm thinking if you want to go out with this bang and one more thing before i wrap it up because this video is long okay but listen i love janet y'all know i do okay um and i know what she stands for you know she wants us to be you know united she wants us to hold hands and you know sway together and kumbaya no ma'am not with this album do you know how long it's been it's because I'm getting stressed out thinking about it. It's been, how long ago? It's 14? Am I doing math correctly? Yep, no. Yeah, 14 years since Janet Jackson has moaned on a song. Because y'all know Janet was giving us sex songs. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> but Janet was giving us sex songs back to back. Do you understand me? She was cussing on the tracks, moaning on the tracks. It's been years since she's done that so for this album this era that you want to go out with a bang with i ain't really got time for no let's join together and you know no no mm -mm. if you're gonna go out with this bang i need you to be cussing i need you to be moaning i need to hear thunder and rain in the background i need you to be saying stupid bit in my beach house i need you to be revealing some stuff if you're going out with this bang Okay, I need five back to back to back to back to back sex songs. That's what I need. Okay, can y'all tell which Janet songs are my favorite? <laughs> okay, them sex songs hit different, but I digress. That's all I'm saying. So, okay, we can heal the world a different time. We can kumbaya a different time. But as far as Black Diamond, I need raw. I need cussing. I need sexual noises. Okay, that's what I need. That's what I need. I need it to be real explicit. I need that to be a uh, E or yeah, E next to the album. That's my personal commands, okay? If she can access and forgive Justin, then me asking for sex songs can't be outrageous. So let me know how y'all thought about the documentary. Did y'all watch it? Did y'all learn something new about Miss Jackson that you didn't know before? And I just love how this brought us all together. This was low-key like watching the BET Awards when it was good. Um, but it was like watching the BET Awards and all of us live tweeting and seeing people, you know, discover her for the first time. Because listen, she's charting on the tops. What? She's charting. She's topping the charts. What am I trying to say, y'all? I'm sleeping. She's topping the charts again. She's doing her thing. And seeing people rediscover their love for her is just amazing. So let me know what y'all think. And I will catch y'all on the next video. I love y'all. Bye. <laughs>